Another fleet operation in the South China Sea is the Amphibious Task Force. It supports teams of Marines and their helicopters that collectively are known as the Special Landing Force. The SLF operates from a specially designed ship that is a combination troop ship and helicopter carrier called an LPH. With almost lightning speed, the Special Landing Force can strike from the sky by helicopter and across the beach by amphibian vehicles in a highly effective two-pronged assault. The SLF has been employed at many points along the coast of South Vietnam. These Marines are part of the air attack group in the operation in which we're going to participate today. As they head toward land and a new battlefield, the minds of the fighting men are occupied with their own thoughts, their own prayers. Even for those who have taken part in many previous operations, the race toward a new unknown always carries with it that special feeling in the pit of the stomach. We fly above the beach assault force, for our helicopter landing zone is well inland, behind the enemy position. We expect to catch him by surprise. The helicopter force will block him from escaping toward the west, while the beach assault group offloads swiftly, then moves inland to play the hammer against the anvil. Marines push through the jungle, they must overcome natural obstacles as well as the enemy hiding someplace in the dense growth. A river to cross is a welcome coolness, but its waters support a myriad of leeches that slip inside clothing to fasten on the skin. The wounds they leave are easily infected in this tropical climate. In deep jungle ravines, the troopers slip down and climb back endlessly for every foot they advance. Now you are with them, and watch where you step and where you grab. A movement in the shadow beneath you could be a vicious giant rodent. A harmless looking vine might be a poisonous snake. Even the trees in this rainforest are hostile. They grow so thick their triple canopies bring darkness at noon. Hang on to the man in front of you, or you're lost in this midnight gloom. Then, suddenly, out of the misty darkness, contact. The enemy has good position and appears to be superior in numbers, so the Marines call in their equalizers, their support from the sky. This is the moment for which these pilots have been prepared, for which they've been ready and waiting. Approaching the target area, contact is made with the forward air controller. This Marine is an aviator attached to a ground unit. He gives the pilots all the information they need to provide pinpoint close air support for the ground troops, a Marine Corps specialty. needed to even up the odds, and the infantry action is positive and powerful in destroying the remaining enemy. Usually less than 30 minutes after being hit, a seriously wounded man is in the operating room, either at a field hospital or aboard the USS Repose, a hospital ship that has been a welcome addition to our medical facilities in the combat zone. Though battle wounds are the cause of most of the serious casualties, there are many more that result from the environment. Heat prostration, immersion foot, malaria, these can be as devastating to our combat effectiveness as bullets or pungi pits. But the knowledge that quick and sure care is close at hand helps keep morale high in the rice paddies. 
But the Red Cross, which symbolizes our medical units, is not the only cross in Vietnam. Wherever the Marines and sailors go, the chaplain also goes. Whether it is for moral and spiritual counseling, a friendly word to a lonely man, or the softening of unpleasant news from home, the chaplain is on the scene. Be it a stretch of sand or a clearing in the jungle, it becomes a church as he sets up his altar. The men gather to worship in the same familiar routine of devotion as their families back home. As he holds service, the chaplain cannot dismiss the thought. Will they all return? He knows full well they won't all come back alive. Prayers are said, a letter is written home to the family, yet so little can be done for this one who has given so much. There will be no more tales of his exciting adventure in a far off land. No more plans for his education, his family, his home. He may have been a lad, not quite a man in years, but he gave us a man's greatest treasure, his life. And he gave it not unknowingly. These men prove every day they understand the why of Vietnam. Listen to a few letters written home by these young men, some of whom have since been killed. Those boys were burning their draft cards, marching in protest, getting married, and hiding behind an education. You just show me that they aren't mature enough to accept the responsibility of being an American and therefore they don't deserve to be called Americans. Mom, I don't want to die over here, but it is what it takes to make the world a better place for you and Dad and everyone to live, then giving my life won't be in vain. I try to love my fellow man, no matter who or what he is. I find it hard to believe that American men and women really object to U.S. servicemen being here in Vietnam. If those people who parade, protest, and tell us we're fighting a useless war had to live without their freedom, they change their point of view. Please don't think I'm trying to talk or act like a hero because I'm far from it. I'm just trying to do my part in this war. But it's a war that I'd gladly give my life for if it had helped bring freedom to the people here and help it grow stronger in our own country. The day I left home to come over here, I kissed my kids goodbye and my wife had tears in her eyes. I'm just like thousands of other servicemen here in Vietnam who dream of seeing our families and loved ones again. I do not wish to die here, but I have no fear of death. I know my God is real, and my trust and faith is in Him. Keep praying for me, as I shall pray for you. It's a lousy war, as is any war, but it's going to be fought sometime, someplace. I hate to see what it's doing to these poor people here in Vietnam, but I'd rather be here than in Minnesota. If and when my time to go comes, I will go. I'll go because I know the meaning of the word freedom. I'll go because I love my family, I love my country, and I love my God. Call it any name you will, from foolishness to sacrifice, but be sure to include love. This is the end of our day in Vietnam a glimpse of the war as it is being waged all day, every day, by these young men who are growing up in a hurry. 18, 19, 20 years old. They were boys when they got here. They've become men overnight. The suffering, hardships, and sorrow they bear, not only their own, but what they see in others around them, has helped to make them compassionate, tolerant, and mature. The young men who comprise the vast bulk of our Navy and our Marine Corps, who were seldom seen on television, who were rarely interviewed by the press. These men are, as they have always been, the truly strong men of our nation. Only a couple of years ago, these young men would have been embarrassed to tell what patriotism meant to them, how much they loved their homes, their God, their country. Now they daily risk their lives for their beliefs. This vast cross-section of America, it's young, tired, 
gallant fighting men. This is not only the face of America, this is the heart of America. They will return, most of them, but that valiant heart will keep beating only if it is nourished and sustained by the rest of America. And these then are the true heroes of the war, the young men of your Navy and your Marine Corps. Whatever they are, and ultimately, whatever our country is, we owe to them and their brothers in the other services, past, present, and future.